This is episode 72 of Zen and the Art of Real Estate Investing with my guest, David Lecco. David is the CEO of Deal Machine and the co-host of the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. If you do live under a rock and don't know what Deal Machine is, we're going to talk about it, but Deal Machine aims to unlock the true potential of real estate investing for everyone from seasoned professionals to aspiring new scum newcomers. David, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jonathan. It's great to be here. Yeah, man. It's, I'm really excited to talk to you because I, I've always my whole life been driving for dollars and then you guys have this platform. But let's talk about what your real estate uh, journey has been. When was the first time that you remember being interested in real estate? Yeah, I was actually, oh, my, my life was pretty rough because I was working for a small tech company and I was not only the software developer, but I was also the tech support and the trainer. And when the software was utilized a lot, I would have to bring my computer with me to the bar or to a restaurant and even in my friend's wedding. And I would get the calls and I would have to fix the technology from my hotspot with my laptop. So I literally slept with my computer under my pillow and I, I learned a ton at that job, but it was like two years in Jonathan and enough was enough. I had to get some of my time back. The owner of that company also had five rental properties and that allowed me access to ask him like, why did you, why do you have these rental properties? I thought stock market investing was the way to build wealth. And what he told me, I'll never forget because it's driven my actions for the following, you know, eight plus years of my life where I'm at now. And he was like, David, the stock market can go up and down at any time, but your real estate investments, if you buy them right, they're going to cash flow and give you cash flow every single month as long as you buy them right and you manage them well. And if there is appreciation, then that's just icing on the cake. But the thing is, like you're guaranteeing these results. And we all know the number one rule of investing from Warren Buffett is don't lose money. And so I thought that was pretty awesome. And that was in 2014 or 2015. So that was the first time that I got interested in real estate investing. That's why I asked, because I feel like it comes to uh, investors and, and creators at all different parts where it's like, wait, why didn't I think of this before? Once you just got started and you started kind of on that trajectory, were you like, why wasn't I thinking about this earlier? Well, I was quite excited, but I was quickly deflated by his final comment, which was, well, I bought these and, you know, right after the 2008 crash. So there was lots of deals around, but I don't know if you could find deals like these anymore. And so I was quickly deflated, man, and I uh, found some hope uh, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then I found some hope going to a real estate meetup. I found people who do deals this month, right? Like they're doing deals right now. So I, yeah. I got really, really excited, went out driving for dollars. They're like you, because you don't have a ton of money and because none of the houses on the MLS will cash flow, you should go look for a rundown house, get in touch with the owner by sending them a letter asking if they want to sell their house quickly and with cash. And then if they call you, you could do a deal, fix up the house and still have a really, really great deal because you bought it at such a discount because it was in disrepair. So I started doing that excited. But then, I mean, I was like two months in writing down these addresses and I <laughs> saw one under construction and I ran home. I was like, I'm pretty sure I had this on my list. I did, but somebody had just bought it. And for a price I thought would have made sense for me. So I was like frustrated as all heck because I missed out on this after putting in two months of work. So I basically made like a little widget on my phone with the computer skills that I had. And it would just let me pin the house and look up who owns it and have another company send the letter. So that, that was like something I just put on my own phone yeah. as a next step. Did, did your investing journey uh, also take off just because of meeting local Indianapolis investors who were obviously helped you get started, but then continued to help? It's a business model that nobody knows about. And you have to be around people that have succeeded in order to be successful. Because otherwise, you have doubts about, is this business model legit? Am I really going through all these no's or people who are uninterested to get something good at the end? And unless you see that, how could you keep going? I couldn't. I know that. So that's why I would say meetups are hugely important. Being in a community of people who have done what you're trying to accomplish immensely important. Here's an, another example. My parents were so proud of me that I got an engineering degree. And then they were so terrified I was going to do real estate investing. They sat me down 
And they're like, David, we just want you to get a nice house and a nice car. Why are you restricting yourself living with roommates and driving this, you know, 15 year old car and then risking it all on this real estate investment? They're like, we talked to everyone we know who had an investment and they had a horrible experience. The tenant trashed the house. And I was like, guys, I appreciate it, but I'm going to do this anyway, because I'm talking to people who are successful. And if I hadn't been to meetups, I wouldn't have been able to like yeah. you know, say that. So I would have got scared by their stories. Yeah, good question. I mean, I for me personally, like as a long term investor, I haven't been buying, but that 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 in no way means I'm not looking. I literally look and nurture clients and off market seller uh, all the time for for years um, because my nurture technique is one that like I won't even ask about the property multiple times when I call. And that's what I think some newer investors, they're so gung ho to do it that the only conversation they want to have is, can I buy your house for cash? And you're like, but you don't even have any cash. So why, why are you using that dialogue? Like you have to do, you know, you need seller finance or like you said, sub two. Um, yeah. So I, I'm always looking and I'm waiting until everything gets, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't say a little bit better because like you said, if everybody is withdrawing from the market, that's when I'm in the market. I'm just watching. Cause mm -hmm. I'm in New Jersey. So the deals just are not there. <laughs> yeah. But like a little bit different in New Jersey yeah. compared to the Midwest. Off market sellers are insane. Like they think they have like, you know, full list price offers. So we're having a little, you know, trouble, but, but again, there's a, there's a cliff in every market where when it's a seller's market, it's like that for a long time. And then all of a sudden there's a one month cliff where everybody starts to realize you're not getting what you thought you were going to get. And remember, you have to sell. So now you're in trouble because now we're all coming back for the property. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, when those interest rates come down, the price is going to skyrocket whenever that happens, right? Yeah. So I'm always of the mindset that I am not going to try and time the market. If I was going to try and time the market, I would have never got started because yeah. my, my mentor told, he told me. told you not to. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you can't get these deals now. These were back in 2009. Yeah, it's a, that's a great point. I, I mean, so Ricky Carruth always says, you know, every day there's deals being made. So for someone to say like, oh, there's no deals, like the deals personally just aren't good enough for my buy box right now where I am in New Jersey for local mm -hmm. investing. But there's literally closings happening every day. I'm right. watching them. I see them on the MLS. I see them happen with people that I know are in wholesaling. So like they're happening. And I think like if you want to be a good real estate investor, you're, you're never off. Mm -hmm. You know, you're never on a pause. You're just you're just looking at the data, looking at homes, you know, driving, driving homes. And it takes a lot of follow up. You know, it doesn't take one postcard. <laughs> yeah. If you if it was one postcard, we'd all be rich. But that doesn't right. work like that.